Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sham again and now we're going to talk about the CT planning. So the beginning is going to be a theoretical um, part of the lecture and then starting from the next is going to be a bit of practical. So these are the topics we're going to discuss today. We're going to talk about the acquisition, the concept and aim uh, and uh, along the way you will discover more. So let's start with the acquisition. The most important thing that you have to know in order to make a very good CT analysis, you have to get a very good CT quality at the beginning. And these are some basic stuff that you need to know in order to uh, send your patient to a very uh, good radiology lab in to do a very good CT. The CT requirements, the system has to be at least a 64 detector. That means a slice of 64. The most common now are 125. Even more was going to be better. Uh, this uh, will give you a slice thickness of 0.5 to 0.6 millimeter, and this is uh, very enough in order to do an adequate, uh, an adequate measurements. And the thing is that you have to do the entire aorta and the iliofemoral arteries as well in this scan. So what about the recommendations? So what we're going to talk about is the ACG gated aortic root and heart acquisition. That means that the, you have to connect the ECGs to the uh, patients while doing the CT in order to know how uh, the cardiac cycle itself and when to take, when to take the images. Uh, the, the second thing is that you know that whenever you do the ECG gated, the, the length of the tests will be prolonged not like the regular CT. So that's why the most important is to do the aortic root and the heart acquisition with an ECG gated. However, the rest of the test, which is the aorta, the ephemerals, and the, bi uh, and, the uh, and the femoral vasculature is, um, by itself, uh, non-ECG gated. So the other option is that to do the whole thorax with an ECG gated, and then the rest of the test without an ECG gated. So let's dive into what is an ECG gating. So the ECG gating is that it divides, the machine divides the cardiac cycle into uh, uh, 0 to 100% between an, uh, an every R and its successive R wave. And this will makes the uh, registration of the whole slices between the cardiac cycles the same. So whenever each cycle, the, the ECG, will, uh, the, the CT will get the images at the same phase each time of the cardiac cycle. So the uh, motion artifact will be delineated. So three principles should be taken. Retrospective ECG gating, not prospective, because you will not predict what's going into the other one. At dose modulations, which is when you need the higher dose into the specific phase, it will be high, and then the other one will be low. And the thing is, uh, a, a prospective can be in some machines, but it's not um, uh, um, reliable, like the retrospective. So how do we prepare our patients? We all know this, that we may have to maintain an adequate fluid intake. Uh, a, a severe renal impairments, you have to do this uh, um, um, uh, hydration before the CT and also follow up the kidney functions afterwards. Uh, we have to put a very um, uh, uh, adequate cannula, which is a 20 gauge cannulas, um, preferably into the anticubital vein rather than the ones in the hand. The first thing that the ECG, the, um, the CT does, which is a non-contrast um, uh, score for the calcium. And it's not an essential component for all the examinations. However, it gives you um, an idea about uh, the uh, aortic valve itself and its severity. So if you get an, a score more than 3,000 in men or 1,600 in women, that means that the severe aortic stenosis is most likely or uh, when the opposite is like less than 1,600 uh, or 800, then the aortic stenosis is less likely. Um, also, you have to know something that the aortic valve calcification is important and I'm going to talk into details about it further into the presentation. However, there are two um, main things how to uh, assess them. First, which is visually, you have to see it's symmetrical or not symmetrical. And the other one is quantifiably um, with the um, Agaston score, like you see here in uh, this patient, for example, with a calcium score of 9,710. So uh, this is more technical for those who are into details that uh, you uh, can, what is the slight thickness that you need for the thorax, the heart, and what is the uh, radiation dose for uh, patients according to the weight. And lastly, this is the recommendations for the IV contrast administration. If you can post the video, take an image, and then discuss with your radiology how to do uh, a perfect CT scan uh, for your patients. 
So this is mainly the, the fast thing about the acquisition. I don't think we need anything more. Uh, this is just some um, of our recommendations on how to do the infusion, uh, which is the most important and you have to do it in the low flow rates as though as three million per seconds. And this will uh, have a minimum effect on the kidney, the, the patient's renal function. And we recommend, uh, and also gets the um, a very good quality for the CT. So uh, this is the end for the acquisition and this is the end for the first video uh, and hope you guys uh, keep posted. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed.